folks. Hello. Good morning. You are very welcome. Thanks for joining. Um, delighted to have you uh, with me this morning um, from a, a pretty grey, miserable Dublin, but uh, all is good. Um, thanks very much for joining this morning. Um, for those of you who I haven't met uh, before, my name is Rob McGee. I'm the CEO at Ingenio. We have a couple of businesses that are focused on helping tech and software organizations. Uh, one is a recruitment business and the second is an e-learning business. And uh, I am really delighted to welcome everyone who is joined in this morning live on Zoom. Um, whether you're watching back maybe on a recording afterwards or indeed whether you're listening back uh, on podcast, really delighted uh, to have you with us this morning and uh, look forward to hopefully giving you something of significant value and benefit that you can take away. Um, we're running and we, we've always run, we run a series every month and the series that we're running this month is, is all around the job interview. Uh, so that's what we're going to be talking about over, over the next five weeks, uh, the five weeks of March. So all around succeeding a job interview. Um, so look, let's get started. I know there's a, a couple of people are still joining. I wanted to uh, raise a little bit of awareness about an event that we are doing, absolutely delighted to be doing next week to celebrate International Women's Day. Uh, we're calling the series uh, Women Talk Tech. And I will be interviewing, a bit like in these sessions, really quick, snappy 15 minute sessions. Uh, and I'll be interviewing um, female leaders from the tech and software industry. And um, very specifically, people that we uh, at Ingenio have either placed as candidates uh, and, and delighted to have helped in their success and from a career perspective, or indeed that we're working with from a client perspective. And you'll see um, there's eight ladies there who, who have a range of skill sets across engineering, across sales, uh, marketing, services, and uh, leadership. I guess the real common connection and thread here is that uh, all of these ladies are working in leading technology and software businesses. I'll be talking to them uh, about their experiences um, and very specifically, it'll be to do with getting hired and, and hiring and their tips. So um, I'd love you to tune in. We're going to be running that uh, all of next week, starting on uh, Monday, which is which is uh, International Women's Day itself. Um, without any further ado, uh, what are we doing and why are you tuned in this morning? Um, you are very clearly interested in learning some more about, uh, I guess, really succeeding from an interview perspective. So over the next five weeks, as I said, we're going to be running a session each week, uh, each Tuesday morning. Um, today is all about getting ready for the interview. OK, so let's assume and we've been, we've spent the last uh, the last four weeks of February talking about um, talking about, uh, I, I guess, developing and building your personal brand. And really now let's work on the assumption that you've nailed the interview. So you've got through the application process and you're into the interview piece. What do you do? Uh, and, and all of the sessions that we're going to be running over the next couple of weeks are going to build from that. OK. Um, in terms of interview prep, I think this is probably, uh, if not the biggest, it is it is one of the biggest areas where our candidates, um, where we see candidates fail and, and fail really, really badly in that they don't put the right level of time and attention and focus into interviewing. Um, so the purpose of, of my session uh, today is I'm going to help you really accelerate your prep, uh, really um, get into a lot of detail. And, and again, this is our experience uh, of watching candidates go through that whole prep perspective. This is something that my, that my recruiters, the guys in my team, we spend a huge amount of time helping candidates to, to kind of nail. And I think there's four key things that I wanted to get you to, to kind of really think about. Um, in our course, on the Ingenio Learning course, 
there are 15 absolutely key things to do. So the mandatory things that you have to go and do in advance of interviewing. Um, so look, obviously you need to buy the course to figure out or find out what those 15 things are. I'm gonna talk about a few things here this morning, okay? So the first thing is, uh, again, as you'll know, um, from Ingenio's perspective, we work with tech, software, and SaaS organizations. Um, so look, if you're, if you're interviewing or you're trying to prepare for interviews in other industries, and I know there's a number of people here this morning from other industries with a view on other industries, um, maybe this first piece doesn't necessarily apply, but I really want you to try and tune into this. Most technology and software organizations have a product, okay? And that product um, is a piece of software, it could be indeed hardware, it could be a service. But it, for the most part, what you'll find is, is, is that those organizations typically, whether they're B2B or B2C orientated, they'll have a trial or a demo product available on their website that you can use or consume or test. Now it's clearly, it's not built for people who are interviewing, it's built for potential customers. But really what I want you to try and get into the habit of doing is, is really starting to search out those organizations where you are interviewing for that have or offer a trial or demo product or software. It doesn't matter what position or job or title or team or function you are interviewing for. For God's sake, take the time to actually understand what it is that this potential employer actually does from a product or service perspective. Um, and you'll see free trials or signups or demos or whatever the case may be, but, but absolutely make sure you take advantage of it. If the organization that you are interviewing for doesn't have a trial or demo, and again, I'm going to come on to this now in a little bit, what, I'm, what, what you need to go and do is figure out who are their competitors and, and try and see if they have something that is offered that you can, you can use or consume. Okay, so that's that first piece. Um, the next piece is, is all around defining and understanding the agenda and really importantly, the audience, okay? So whether you're working with a recruiter, an agency like, like us, whether you're working with an in-house recruiter, uh, whether you are working direct with someone in their HR team or whether you're interviewing or whether you're engaging directly with the interviewer themselves, make sure that you get the agenda confirmed in writing, okay? And that's really, really important. Why? Because your understanding of what the interview is is going to be about and the interviewers understanding of what they're expecting they need to be completely lined up um, and but really importantly that allows you to go and do some 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 bloody good preparation okay you need to uh, obviously make sure that you've got time location format dress uh, dress code um, the who the how long what topic structure Th these are all really basics right but but again it's very very important um, obviously everything is happening right now from an interview perspective, it's happening remotely. Uh, so you don't necessarily have, location doesn't necessarily, uh, isn't necessarily the thing that it was, uh, you know, 15 months ago. But there's a couple of things that we're seeing uh, kind of trip people up, again, particularly working in technology and software businesses, whereby people are maybe tuning in or interviewing or are participating in an interview from different parts of the world. So check the time zone. Really, really, really important. There might be an assumption that you're doing a, a, an interview in GMT, so UK, Ireland time zone. There might be a, a, an expectation if you're interviewing for a European business or a US headquartered business that you're going to be interviewing in their time zone. So just make sure that you're nailed on that. Uh, dress, really important again just to be just to make sure that you're matching uh, the expectation of the person that who's going to be interviewing you um, and yeah I think you know again really really important probably less so in in these days where again a lot of stuff is remote but it's really really important that you rock up to an interview appropriately dressed um, so that so that's really important um, the agenda and the audience defines your prep as I've said already and really what I, what I want you to try and do here is, let's say for example, there might be three people interviewing you and one is a hiring manager who's, let's say for example, a VP of sales or a sales director. 
The other one might be someone from HR. And the last person is maybe someone who is maybe doing the job today that you might be doing. So if you think about the audience objectives, those three people will have completely different objectives from that interview, right? Despite the fact that they're all in the same interview, they'll have completely different objectives. So what you need to do is really tease that out, okay? It's really, really important that what is the HR uh, person looking for? Well, they're looking to really determine suitability fit. They're looking to determine uh, any potential kind of issues or problems that might arise. Um, they're looking to, yeah, they're looking to really try and kind of see at a, at a, at a high level how you're going to connect into the business. Your peer, your potential colleague, well, they want to f maybe figure out um, how are you, how is, what's it going to be like to work with you day in, day out? You know, are you going to be someone who's going to drive, you know, positivity into the team? So, so how you speak to that individual will be very, very different from how you speak to your potential future boss, uh, who's going to really want to understand where have you been before? What experience have you got? And actually, do you have the capability to go and do the job and deliver the, in a sales perspective, I'm just using that as an example, to deliver the targets or the metrics or the KPI output, okay? Really, really important. And, and as I said to you, you know, from a persona perspective, it's just really important that you map out who, uh, who these people are and, and really tune in from your perspective as to what you think they might be looking for, okay? So that's the agenda and the audience. Really, really, really important, okay? I'm gonna move on here. Um, this is definitely no disrespect to any grannies out there, but look, the granny test for me is something that I like to, to really try and nail with candidates, which is, um, there's a really important question that people can tune into very, very quickly and get wrong miserably, which is, tell me what you think we do as an organization, or tell me what you, you've managed to research about our business. And where people really mess this up, particularly at a junior level, okay, but, but, but you know, I, I definitely don't want to put this down to a lack of experience because we do see this at all levels. But where people really mess up is they're effectively trying to memorize what's on the website, okay? And a website is, is, is built predominantly to attract and communicate with customers not exclusively but if you think about it if a technology organization is trying to sell a product or a service okay they're they're typically tuning in to their customers and and that sometimes trips candidates up particularly where maybe they, they aren't in that space right now okay so the granny test is is a five questions if you can imagine talking to your granny or your granddad, and you were trying to explain to them what this business did or does, uh, that's the test for you here, okay? Do you really understand what this business does? What problem are they solving? What's their solution to the problem? Who are their competitors? And really importantly, who are their customers? If you can nail those five questions and be able to articulate really importantly, in your own words, not the company's words, not what's on the website, in your words, if you're able to articulate that, um, you'll absolutely breeze through that. And that's really, really important, okay? So to all the grannies out there, hopefully that makes a bit of sense. And the last one I wanted to cover off today uh, is, is potentially the most important one, right? And, and this is an exercise that you, uh, you cannot answer the same for every interview that you do, okay? It has to be bespoke. It has to be unique for every opportunity that you're in, okay? And the start of the, of the, of the phrase or the statement is, I am the ideal candidate because, okay? I am the ideal candidate because, and it's going to be something about that you are unique, that you have experience, that you have an attitude uh, or a personality trait, that you have an interest or that you have a fit, okay? 
And the reason there's a video recorder down the bottom, this is really, really important, okay, is that this is probably the most important impacting statement that you will make in an interview to a hiring manager or to someone from a HR perspective, okay? The most important statement that you are going to make in an interview is telling these people why you are the ideal candidate. And you need, uh, because that is such an important statement, you absolutely need to nail it. You need to be really comfortable saying it. And a bit like I am right now, you need to be staring down the camera and you need to be saying it with conviction so that they actually believe you, right? So that they actually believe you. So I really want you to tune into this, okay? Um, so, so let's say, for example, if I'm interviewing at an organization who, you know, let, and I'm going to use the sale. I, last week, I was talking about data analysts. Previous week, I was talking about project managers. I'm going, to, I'm going to continue on with the sales analogy, right? But I am the ideal candidate because I have six months of sales experience working in a B2B software organization that are focused on selling to organ, or organizations in the marketing and e-commerce space. OK, that statement, I haven't prepped that right, but that statement like really elevates up your importance to the hiring manager and to anyone who might be participating in that interview. And um, so what is that saying there? So so in, in that instance, I'm saying I'm the ideal candidate because I have some experience. I have some very specific experience that directly relates to the organization that I'm interviewing for. So you can see, uh, you can see that, like very very quickly, I can tune myself in to whatever type of organization I'm interviewing for, based on the background, based on their customers, based on their competition. And again, you'll see why uh, doing all of this preparation in sequence is really really important for you. Okay, so. What I want you to do, and by the way, I am really happy, really, really, really happy to take. If you want to, if you want to ping me, um, uh, if you want to ping me on email, you know, maybe some of those videos. Uh, I'm really happy to have a look at them and critique them, and and you know, give you some feedback. And indeed, happy for my team to go and do so. And 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 look, it's a, it's a it's a one or two sentence line. I am the ideal candidate because, boom, needs to be really really punchy. Okay. So there's a bit of, uh, there's, a, there's an offer for help there uh, if, if, um, if you'd like, okay? Just in terms of uh, winding up, and I've got some really important information to, to kind of share with you here. So, so as I said right at the beginning, we have built and developed Ingenio Learning. It's an e-learning uh, e platform. It's really specifically, it's a course to help people like you get hired by technology and software organizations. OK, um, what's in the course and um, we've we've built a huge amount of content. So the stuff that I'm covering today, it's that times 100 um, and it goes into a huge amount more detail. It goes into obviously a huge amount of, of other areas that we've not that we're not even close to covering here today based across 20 modules. OK, you get access to a ton of. Uh, worksheets, exercises, practicals that we've built specifically to help you go through the course and make it really personal to you. So that it actually means something to you, not a generic kind of vanilla course. That's really, really important. And clearly you get access into us and our team and, and our, our, you know, our people and a lot of the content that we're sharing right here um, and, and that we do each week. Um, we have uh, just again from a from a I guess a kind of a gift or a bonus to anyone who's tuned in this morning uh, or who's listening. Uh, the course normally retails at a hundred euros. Uh, we're offering a sixty five percent discount that expires this Friday, uh, and there are places still available uh, for purchase. So look, uh, and clearly there's a ton of stuff that we've got we've built in terms of benefit. Um, you know, you have a 30 day money, uh, you have a 30 day money back guarantee on the course. And really interesting, some of the stats 
uh, and insight that we are building from our uh, from our user base is that now, having been live since last September, 90% of the people that take this course get hired within 90 days. So it's 90 and 90. Hopefully that resonates with you in terms of an outcome. Where can you be yourself by engaging with us and taking the course? And where does that get you in terms of where you want to be around your goals, ambitions, uh, and that type of stuff? Really, really important. Okay. Um, I am going to... As we always do, I'm going to um, take questions, so shoot them in. I'm going to run a really quick poll, as I as we always do, because I want to uh, I really want to try and get some insight, and I want to try and give people who are here a little bit of a kind of a community or a collegiate in terms of where they're at, in terms of where they're at. So, please, guys, it'll take you literally three seconds. Please vote and let me go and share. Uh, let me go and share the details on that, uh, so that you can you can get a bit of an insight in terms of where things are at. While I'm waiting on that, while I'm waiting for that to build, uh, next week we're going to be talking about controlling a job interview. So look, you don't write the agenda, but it it is all about you, and I think that's really really important. So that you have a an autonomy, that you have control, that you have a little power, a little bit of power, and that you have influence. And that's what next week is going to be all about. Um, and that's really really important because it gives people a level of confidence when they're going into interview. Really really important. So don't miss out next week. Um, fascinating results in this poll. Right, uh, fascinating results. Seventy-four percent have never recorded uh, yourself answering that question. Seventy, it's just dropped there now. Seventy-two percent, right? So, so well over two thirds of people don't do that level of prep um, before they go into a, an interview. And look, I think that's. I think that if you're tuning in and you're one of that, you know, you're in that seventy percent. Like you need to change your behavior, you need to change your prep and you need to change your habits. If you are in the 28 or 30% of people who are doing it, look, firstly, well done. And secondly, I'm really interested to hear from you as to, you know, how does that feel? How does, uh, does it, does it really, does it put you into a kind of a level of comfort? Um, so yeah, but, but, but I think that's really, really important that people have a, a kind of a semblance of, you know, that's what the competition looks like right now. OK, um, I'm going to uh, I'm going to jump into uh, Q&A. So uh, let's see what we have here. Uh, I'll just go in sequence. Collins, uh, Gidesu Collins. The main question for Rob could, uh, could address is on how to answer questions as such if the recruiter or the job interviewer is asking questions related to a uh, project portfolio to ascertain some extra level of belief in your work. What are some of the possible questions asked and how is it framed and how do you go about answering it? Yeah, look, I think a portfolio, clearly having a portfolio only relates to certain types of jobs. Um, but whether you're in sales or you're a project or you're an engineer or you are uh, maybe a data analyst or, or, uh, or a business analyst, I think Collins, as you are in this instance, um, you, you will have experience of having worked in maybe one uh, place or, or a couple of organizations or in a couple of teams or perhaps maybe on a couple of projects in university. And what I would be getting you to do is maybe is give real life examples of those examples, uh, real life examples of those, of those situations, I beg your pardon, uh, so that you're talking with confidence and it, you basically almost build up a document that says, you know, as an IT business analyst, here are the five projects that I've worked on in the last 12 months or in the last 24 months. And the objective of project number one was X and the outcome was Y. And, and this, this was what the benefit was to the business. So I think that portfolio, like really trying to paint a picture. Uh, and by the way, that might be a document, right? So now that you've been asked for a portfolio, Perhaps it's it, the onus, Collins, is on you to basically build up a document that says, here are the projects that I have worked on as an IT business analyst. So client, project scope, headline, 
the definition, the, 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 the outcome, the success, the benefit, and what your role was as part of the team, okay? Um, so I hope that helps. Uh, is it you, uh, I hope I've pronounced that correctly. Do you do one-on-one -on -one prep for an interview coming up soon, like next Monday week? Uh, yes, we do. Uh, we provide um, a one-to-one, -one, uh, a one-to-one -one live mentoring session, which you can which you can purchase uh, through our website. I'll get one of the guys to drop you a note on that. Um, so that's uh, that's that question hopefully answered uh collins another one from you also confirming the agenda and audience and writing could you be a bit more could shed a bit more light is that via basic exchange of email um or would they be willing to reveal the other members well look you have to ask the question right so so what i would be saying collins in that situation is put an email together and say you know look i am delighted to be attending for an interview to allow me to prep i'd love to know the following so tell me, is there an agenda? Um, what do you expect me uh, to, to provide or prepare for, right? Is there anything that you expect me to go and do in, in the interview? Um, will there be anyone else involved? If there is, tell, can you tell me a little bit about what they do or what their roles are, just so that you can prepare? So, so look, um, you know, every recruiter, whether they're an agency or an in-house person or any HR individual, the very, the very, very first, the, the most important thing that people want to do when they invite people to interview, like they want the interview to be productive. So like if someone isn't sharing information with you about an agenda in advance or expectations, like they're kind of setting you up for failure. Okay. And it's going to be really tricky. Uh, it's going to be really tricky for you to be able to perform without some form of kind of a semblance of structure as to what's going on. So look, I hope um hope that helps answer that question it's a really really good question um akash you are asking me how will this course help to get a job in the tech industry yeah look i think without overselling the course i mean look i am um, i'm 20 years working in technology and software i i started this recruitment business six years ago because having sold a technology organization we found that there were very, very few recruiters out there who were able to really understand technology and software businesses. We have a ton of experience in our business uh, right across the team. Our, our recruiters are very specialist around kind of practice experts. So we've got guys who are engineering, we've got guys who are product, we've got guys who are sales orientated. And I think what we've done a cash building this course is emptying our heads and putting it all into content so that people can consume it. So look, I hope, um, you know, we work with uh, like a couple of hundred of the top uh, and fastest growing technology and software businesses across UK, Ireland, Europe, the US. We know what we're talking about and hopefully I've been able to give you in this session a little bit of context on that. So I hope that answers that question. <laughs> Uh, Paula, um, how to prove to an autonomous company that you are able to adapt, even though you are coming from a very structured organization hospital? Well, wow, okay. Um, yeah, well, look, I, I would imagine straight off, I don't know what you do, Paula. Uh, I don't know what your job is and I don't know what your responsibility is. But look, I would imagine that whilst the hospital is very structured and organized, I would imagine that the stuff that goes on in a hospital on a day-to-day -day basis is unbelievably um, agile and fluent and change, you know, and dynamic and, and changes lots. So I, I think, you know, being able to, to, to have that level of adaptability would clearly for me be like a really interesting kind of personality attribute to an autonomous uh, to an autonomous company. But look, I, I'm happy to take an email from you directly, Paola, offline on that one, just so that we've got maybe a bit more context uh, in terms of, I guess, your role, what you're doing right now, and really importantly, what you're hoping to do in this autonomous company. Um, situational type of stuff, roles, experience, that type of stuff is really, really important. So, so again, I hope that helps somewhat. Uh, Owen, uh, during a pandemic, would you agree that companies are hiring people on who they know? I was made redundant four months ago, took part in over 20 interviews during that period, yet to be successful in any interview so far, though. 
I thought the interviews went well. Well, listen, look, Owen, tough. Um, you're going through a tough period, and and listen, we're with you. I I, I feel and hear from you. Do you know what? I I I really genuinely genuinely believe that organisations in pandemic time are going well outside of their networks, their established networks, because of the benefit that remote working is is basically able to offer and provide. So I wouldn't necessarily agree with that kind of assumption uh, or that kind of train of thought like immediately. Um, but maybe maybe the industry, the very specific industry that you're working in or around, look, maybe what they're doing is they're trying to trying to gravitate to maybe what they know best. Um, so look, I think it's it, it, what I would be saying to you there in that situation is you need to really break into that space and become an expert. We've done the last four weeks on these sessions, we've done some amazing stuff on the personal brand, which I think really helps uh, people kind of penetrate areas that maybe they found kind of difficult. So, uh, and there's a ton of stuff in the course on that one as well. So, so look, I hope that helps. Um, uh, Michael Wilson, are you seeing trends and salaries going down since COVID? No. We really aren't. We saw we saw an immediate. Uh, so and, and by the way, I'm talking tech and software. We saw an immediate. Um, uh, I guess some organisations took an opportunistic kind of view and approach that like there was tons of people on the market. But again, from a tech and software perspective, Michael, like the the market is bouncing at the moment, like bouncing, and uh, hopefully that gives a load of positivity to anyone out there. So. We're not seeing that. We definitely aren't seeing that. Um, I wouldn't say we're seeing massive growth, by the way, on, on the other side of things, but we're definitely seeing a really decent kind of uptick. And look, what I would say is for people who are good, clients are always willing to overpay. Uh, I hope that helps. Neil James, uh, I've had other recruitment companies that do a pre-interview video that they send prior to a formal interview. Do Does Ingenio provide that service? We don't. Um, and the reason we don't is that uh, everyone, everyone at Nail, everyone interviews slightly differently. Some some clients like it, others hate it. Uh, some people take a view that they that their uh, view would be tainted. Their their uh, view preview of the candidate would be tainted by what they might see in advance of an interview. Uh, so that's the reason that we don't do that. Um, not to say that we won't, we don't do it for particular clients where they're looking for that on a kind of a project or assignment basis. Um, I would always really like to see candidates, and certainly I would be saying this to clients, I would always really like to see candidates have the opportunity to do, you know, to put their best foot forward personally, as opposed to doing it uh, remotely over video. I think that video, uh, pre-screen videos is a real, it's a it's a bit of a cop out, um, where organisations are trying to get huge amounts of volume, and effectively what they're doing is is they're using that as another method just to screen people out that they don't like, or they don't rate, or whatever the case may be. So that's one of the reasons why we we try not do it, uh, and we don't provide it as a kind of a service if you like. Okay, I uh, hope that helps, uh, Jimmy. Uh, as a candidate transitioning from middle office ops to the tech digital transformation space to align with the fourth industrial revolution, what key industry trends or toolkits would you advise to focus on? What a, what a broad, brilliant question, Jimmy. Um, look, I think the first thing I would say to you is, you know, don't treat tech as all the same. That's the very first thing I would say to you. Um, you know, like a, a an organization that is selling technology to marketing organizations or marketing functions is wildly different from an organization that is selling pharmace, uh, technology to pharmaceutical organizations. So as I talk about in the course all the time, you know, you need to get to a level of expertise and niche and focus. Um, so, so what I would say to you is, is like, if you gravitate towards a particular area of tech or software uh, or digital, um, you you need to really tune into that area and become an expert and really focus in on that. I think that's that's probably what I would say to you. Um, it's a big big question. So what I would try and get you to do is 
rather than think thinking macro i would really try and get you to think a little micro on that one and, and really kind of tune into your area and then go after kind of expertise and focus and specialization okay hope that helps uh, michael uh, another question from you what are your thoughts on interviewers asking for very specific information about previous clients names deal sizes after signing ndas yeah look i mean like honesty for me is always the best policy in an interview and um, you know like unless there are really uh, very specific instances where you've got to keep confidential you know I don't see any reason why, let's say, for example, if you're a sales guy and you say, you know, I was working with Bank of Ireland um, on their digital transformation project uh, and I was part of the team that sold their e-banking platform, uh, the headline value on that deal was, was, was 1.5 million euros in turnover. You're not giving you're not giving anything out or away there that probably the market doesn't already know. And it's kind of very specific, but like, I, I hate it when candidates hide behind very like specific uh, specific stuff, you know, and they won't disclose or give information. And the reason I hate that is like is that is that giving like is that giving away a potential reluctance to maybe share information if you're going into an organization that is very collaborative and, and your first reaction is to be very, very guarded. You're, you're immediately kind of disconnecting with the type of organization that you're working with. So look, you know, again, I'm not talking about disclosing sensitive, like really sensitive information, but like saying a client name and talking about a deal size, I, I don't really genuinely think there's any major issue with that um, at, at an interview level. Uh, it's really, really important. Clearly you wouldn't be putting stuff out there in the public domain, you know, on your on your on your LinkedIn profile, and um, but again, no issues with talking about client names on on a, on a CV. Okay, um, so that's that. Thanks, Michael uh, and Kush. Um, how do you sell yourself having a good stakeholder management quality? As this is asked in most star based interviews. Yeah, that's another great question, and Kush. I mean, look. Stakeholder management is all around, obviously, is communicating up, across and down. And, and you know, so, so there are, there's a communication capability there. And there is also a process around how to go and do that. Um, I think for me, Ankush, what I would be doing is I would be, when you're talking about stakeholder management, I would be trying to talk about the people, uh, the people, the multiple people that were involved as stakeholders and talk about them not necessarily as name but maybe as title and so, so that's the first thing so so you know i was responsible for managing stakeholders across five functions of the business they included finance operations marketing logistics and mark uh, sales okay as an example and the program or the project or the piece of work that we were doing the the, the defined business objective was x and the output or outcome was Y, and the time scales were, uh, were Z, okay? And that's how I would do it. So it's about talking about stakeholder management, Ankush, is all around painting a picture, like visually painting a picture for whoever it is that you're interviewing for. Definitely needs a bit of prep, but uh, again, hope that helps. Um, Akash, working at Microsoft, but not in the IT department, but will this course help me to get a job in the other tech industry? I'm keen to learn more about tech. Look, yes. And again, I don't want to talk too much. I don't want to sell too much on this piece here when people are asking questions. Um, but, but look, hopefully the question I asked earlier on around how this will help you will hugely benefit with, with you on that one. Um, Neil James, fair enough. Okay, cool. Um, uh, Kumar, I'm a candidate. Oh, sorry, just that just dropped there. I'm a candidate with Stamp 1G visa and I've been rejected multiple times for getting a perm job. Not sure how I'd move forward. Any comments on this, please, Rob? Yeah, look, Kumar, I think the first thing I would say to you is, uh, like, I'm not a I'm not a visa expert or specialist, right? So, so I think, but what I will say to you is, like, we have clients, and I said this a couple of weeks ago. We have clients who very clearly hire visa uh, visa required or dependent or contingent people and we have other clients who don't go near them okay so what i would be doing is is in your research 
you need to find the organizations in the area that you want to get into who have previously hired people who have a visa de dependency or contingency, okay? And, and do your work. So, so flow with the organizations where there is a track record or an experience where they've hired in that instance before. That's what I would say to you. So, so box clever, like pick a fight that you know you could win rather than trying to go into an organization or trying to even knock down the door in an organization where you know they might look at, at people who require visas and they go, oh, we've never done it before. It might be really complex. Um, might, maybe it's very expensive. Oh God, it sounds like a bit of a, a, a kind of a, uh, you know, a bit of a painful exercise. God, uh, let's just not, let's just not go there. That's what thinks. So you've got to think about it from what goes on from a client's perspective. Like just look, the reality of the situation is there are clients who genuinely think like that. Um, so, so what I would try and do is just don't go after those types of organizations, try and go after someone else. Okay. So I hope that helps Kumar. Um, oh, I'm cool. Jimmy, cool. Uh, to Masele, what happens when the same application is posted by a recruiter and by the company? Yeah, really interesting. I would always, uh, well, clearly, clearly what an organization wants to do is hire direct. And, and I'm saying this kind of knocking my own business out of, of a revenue stream, right? But an organization, when they hire direct, uh, they will always want to hire direct or when they advertise direct, they'll always want to hire direct. And the reason for that, uh, to Maselli, is they don't incur recruitment fees. So look, I mean, if, if you're having two applications posted by a, a company and by a recruiter, I would definitely be applying directly to the company. And then I would have a phone call with the, with the recruiter to determine, look, I've seen this job, you're posting as well you know i've already applied but like can you tell me a little bit about what's going on and, and what the context is and really try and engage with them and build build a relationship with them off the back of that so that you've got some context okay um so again i hope that helps uh okay cool i think um i think i have covered all of the questions there in uh, I think I've covered all the questions in Q and A, guys. Sorry, that has gone on a little longer than I uh, I had expected. So there is one other. There's a couple of other ones in the chat. Uh, Raj, you're asking the Thomas International Assessment. Do you know much about this, as it's been used in interviews? I know it really well, Raj, because we got hired by a client about three years ago who demanded and dictated Thomas. Uh, as a formal method of, of um, psychometric assessment. So to those people who are on, um, Thomas International is a psychometric tool. It's one of many, many, many psychometric tools that are out there. And Raj, psychometrics are being used more and more in interview processes. And they're being used to, um, you know, make sure that basically someone doesn't slip the net who maybe has a completely different character or personality trait that maybe these guys that this organization who's hiring um, is basically looking for. So look, I would say to you, um, really tune into, really tune into psychometrics. Like the, unfortunately, the difficult thing with psychometrics, Raj, there's no right or wrong answer. Um, like you can't, um, you can't prepare for them too much. Um, but clearly you can become comfortable sitting them. That's the thing. So, so there are plenty of tools out there that you can go and do and use and practice on. And that's what I would be saying to you to go and do. Thomas is definitely one of the better ones. Um, so that is that. Uh, can you put the question in the Q&A? That's fine. Uh, Raj, yeah. Uh, 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 um. Ziad, um, the interview process is adapting virtual. What is the best way to approach in that case? Look, again, I think I've covered that earlier on. And um, you just need to prepare to have you need to prepare to be interviewing remotely like like we're doing here today so you need to be comfortable in terms of video you know you need to be making eye contact you need to be using your ears listening to questions obviously those questions need to get answered correctly accurately um uh and but 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 look some of the principles um ziad just don't change and they haven't changed and i don't think they will change so look i hope that helps and i hope that that understands um so 
So one-on-one -on -one interaction. Uh, so yeah, I think I've answered that one earlier on. Yeah. Uh, 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 um, okay, cool. Guys, look, I, I've gone way over. Um, <laughs> I'm kind of making a mockery of this being a free 15-minute session. Um, it's definitely still free, but it's 45 minutes. Look, I hope that that's been hugely useful. Um, we are here to support you. We are here to help you. We've built a product to get you through uh, some of these sticky times. But look, what I will say to you all in closing is stick with us here, right? We're, we're, we're doing some really good stuff here to help you. But the market is like, it's definitely not slowing down. It's speeding up. The market is bouncing, as I said, and there are technology and software organizations looking for so many people across so many different areas at all different levels, okay? So look, with that, keep positive, right? Keep positive, but you've got to keep focused. You've got to have a plan and, and you need to make sure that you've got your goals kind of outlined, defined and set. And I really genuinely do think that we can help you with that. So listen, um, thanks a million for all the questions today. Hope you all found it very useful. Look after yourselves and as always, keep the faith. See ya.